Hello students, welcome to a new video of DAC 2013 Economics Inference Solution. In this video, I will be solving many questions one after another and I will also do the entire paper in the videos. For the complete other year videos like 2014, 15, 16, 17, you can contact us and we will provide you the rest of the videos. Let's start first with today's question. So starting from a stationary position, so this one is a stationary position. Okay, one important thing before I start, remember that TAC is a type of question where, where maths related questions and economics related question even the statistics are all mixed up there is no different segmentation for this which they have it for ISI so here you need to focus really good in this kind of formats okay or else you can plan to go for maths portions completely uh, whenever you are getting a math question and then after finishing those you can come back to you that is also a way of doing it in fact, we will discuss in about this kind of solution structures in our next video. So here what is happening, Sony ran 100 meter in 20 seconds. So the speed structure is f of t is 5. So if it's running for t seconds, so t r, so it is 5t. Assuming that her distance from the starting point is a continuous and differentiable at f t at a time, should it uh, now she would definitely have run at a speed of y meters per hour at some point of time by y equals to now the thing is that this is equal to 5t and none of the thing is as a coming as a multiple of this structure so directly we can say that none of the above is actually correct okay because the functional format doesn't apply for a continuous function to be fall in there although it seems to be like 20 is a very close option but as is the function is differentiable and continuous so this thing is rules out okay next question is it's a real valued function we have over here now with respect to this real valued function f3 is given 2 and this is important and this part is lies between 3 to 4 so all you have to find it f 5 length. So f3 equal to this f4. So we can write this part. So we can write this formation as f3 equal to 3 to y 3 dx less than equal to f of y equal to f of 3. And that will be corresponds to f of y and f does x and dx and this whole thing this whole thing will be less than equal to let me increase the point size a little bit equal to f3 plus 3 to y 4 dx where y greater than equal to 3 so in this particular format all you have to put in y equal to 5 so this will very easily give you f3 which is plus 3 to 5 3 of dx this is less than equal to now this portion f of 5 less than equal to f of 3 and 3 to 5 4 dx so just a minor calculation and this will lead you 8 less than equal to f of 5 less than equal to 10 so this lies between 8 to 10 and uh, this thing so it's a closed interval remember that so closed interval okay now we proceed to next question This is the third question. Here we are talking about the function and some critical points. Remember that this kind of function where four values are together. There is a special function in format of derivative 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. 
So if you have to find the f dash x in this case, because critical points means always first order derivative, first order derivative we have to do. So for f dash x, first you need to keep any other three constant and differentiate the one. So I'm keeping the first three constant and doing the differentiation for the third, which is nothing but one. Similarly for the other things we will be doing, x minus 10, x minus 30. Then x, x minus 10. Okay, 20, 30 we have taken, so let's make it 10. <coughs> and lastly, it will be x minus 10, x minus 20, and x minus 30. That's it. So f dash x is continuous, so f dash 0 we can calculate. This will be minus 6000, you can see it. And then f dash 10 which will give you 6000 and f dash 20 give you minus 6000 and f dash 30 will give you 6000 so we see a functional change with respect to so, and utilizing the value the intermediate value theorem we can write f x okay remember that intermediate value theorem is very important some point between 0 to 10 so f dash x equal to 0 is some point between 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 so obviously in this case our correct option goes for this c now i am proceeding to the next question This question about area of a bounded region fx equal to x square plus 1 and gx and with respect to a given interval. So here we need to draw the curve first. And let me draw the curve. I would request you to just uh, note down the question. So this is a quadratic functional curve the fx and the gx lies like in the below this one and that would be one two three this is a three line and this will be obviously minus six and this is one and uh, this area is integration one two three x square plus one dx as this is a plus one so this goes up and this is x minus six this area x minus 6 and the integration of form which will be minus 1 2 3 so all we need is to just calculate these two this will after calculation give you 40 by 3 this will after calculation give you minus 20 as the, we take the full part so we take 20 so 40 by 3 plus 20 the final answer will be 100 by 3 remember that this is your total required area okay so remember this kind of stuff is dependent on the way you draw the diagram if you draw the diagram well this will be a very easy part and you have to take a look into the aerial portion as well now we have here a limit question and a very easy question because this thing is 3 and this is x minus 2 you know, the denominator isn't 0 so we just put the value just put the value and you will get your answer here it will be 3 square 15 to 1 and whole to the power 3 so minus 8 whole to the power 3 so we can say this is minus 2 that's it next we are proceeding to our next question and this question is about uh, it's a long question so utility function we have our first basic question with respect to economics so here is an utility function individual utility function a with u equal to root 10 root x uh, red will be useful over here 10 root x is given okay where well, x denotes the amount of money available to her suppose that she has 100 rupees okay so x equal to 100 however she has the option of buying a lottery that will cost 51 and if you purchase lottery pays 351 almost like five seven times 
and probability and p and 0 with the probability of the remaining that is 1 minus p. So assume that A is expected utility maximizer which of the following statement is true. So here the statements are important p probability as given and with respect to lottery prizes. So these are the two things which has to deal with the given idea and these are directly only probabilistic values. So how we are going to solve it? So the expected utility is given. So lottery will be purchased only if the expected utility from buying the lottery is more than utility from not buying the lottery. So utility from buying will be greater than utility from not buying. You choose to save the money but you also choosing to lose an opportunity as well. So let's solve it. So here probability and this utility value 100 so he has to pay this 51 and he wins it 351 and if he doesn't so 1 minus p u and 100 minus 51 and this is u of 100 this is the formation so here we can directly form it that the basic formational structure is to proceed with u equal to 100 so p into u of so this is 351 so this is simply 400 plus 1 minus p into u 49 and greater than u 100 so that's it so you just need to solve the structure here so p and the utility function is root u so 10 into root over 400 1 minus p 10 root 49 and this is 10 root 100 just putting the values you can calculate here that is p into 200 plus 1 minus p into 70 greater than 100 so p will be greater than 3 by 31 or p is simply greater than 51 by 220 so they simply they played a trick by multiplying the numerator and denominator by 17 so obviously our correct option here is d okay now we have a couple of questions now these uh, there are two uh, questions and these two questions are interlinked okay so let's take a look into the question first and the question says suppose that there are two goods okay I suppose there are two goods uh, which are imperfect substitutes of each other. So this is very important and so they are not perfect substitutes. I think I need a different color over here. Mm, let me try with pink. Please allow me to try pink. Okay. So good one and good two and demand for good one and good two are as follows. So the demand functions A minus B P one. So both are fairly given an almost uh, similar type of thing and a and a lies between a is positive and b is also positive but less than one so b is a fraction simply so for the goods can be contracted and c is the per unit cost find the equilibrium prices when good one and good two are produced by two different monopolists now this one is a very interesting question so good two are done by two different monopolists so how we are going to do it two different monopolies so the here we have a maximization function we need a maximization function and maximization with respect to price v and pi p i and p j so this is p i minus c price minus cost and this is a p i plus b p j so that's it that is here differentiating with respect to pi i we just get it del pi i and del pi i so with respect to prices a minus pi plus b p j minus pi minus c 
So this is the first order condition, A is obviously leads to zero. So we get the response function of the first form. So with respect to form one, we get it A plus B P J plus C whole divided by two. And solving for this two, this is our B R I for P two. B R I P J actually so B R I or B R 1 P 2 and B R 2 P 1 if we just solve the entire structure we get the values of P 1 and P 2 separately but P 1 and P 2 are equal and you will get it as A plus C by 2 minus P so obviously these two are equal and our option is going for A now the related question which is question number 8 this question number 8 well let me see what they are saying here so now the equilibrium prices of the both goods which are produced by a single monopoly so in a single form it's relatively easier actually so how we are going to do it is uh, just put it as max pi p1 p2 that is P1 minus C A minus B P1 plus B P2 and obviously with respect to this part P2 minus C A minus P2 plus B P1 here it is like this so the differentiating with respect to pi so del pi by del P1 equal to A minus P1 plus B P2 minus p1 minus c and p2 minus c is the first part and del pi by del p2 a minus this one is p2 plus bp1 simple derivative p2 minus c plus bp1 minus c so these are the two we just have to solve and the first order and second order both will be equal to zero so giving the following price so p1 equal to p2 so we just need to solve it and this time also they will be equal that is a minus c minus bc by 2 into 1 minus p so whether they are monopolist or done by the single monopolist or dual monopolist only the prices and the values will be changing okay but remember that prices throughout the market will be same so this is not a discriminating monopolist structure so it's a simple stick form and we end up with the option c in this case okay now proceeding to the next question the next question I will be actually solving in the next video because this video is already of 18 minutes. Okay, so, and uh, do subscribe the portion and there's a bell icon. These two will help you to get my new videos very quickly. And if you need any query or if you are request also to solve any particular question or any idea, you can post it uh, in my YouTube channel or uh, into my website, which is www. Uh, sure of sir classes. dot com this will help you to get the answers of the required questions and anyway i will be solving many questions whenever i get time and i will upload it hope to see you soon at the pinnacle of success tune in for now that's it thank you